The KXAN News Podcast is sponsored by Shelf Genie. Spend to settle the lawsuit against him, filed by four top aides who reported him to the FBI. And chilly with gusty winds this evening. We'll have your weekend forecast coming up in First Warning Weather. Uh, we do again with some breaking news. Austin City Manager Spencer Kronk is soon to be out of a job. Thank you for joining us. I'm Daniel Marine. Two Austin City Council members told KXAN on the condition that they not be named. The council decided unanimously to part ways with Kronk. The decision was made behind closed doors in executive session at last night's meeting, but has not been publicly announced. A spokesperson for the city manager told us no comments. Mayor Kirk Watson placed Kronk's employment on the agenda following complaints about the city's ice storm response and days-long power outages. Some council members also said they were also frustrated that Kronk announced an agreement on a new police contract without looping them in. Another big story this evening, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton has agreed to apologize and pay $3.3 million in taxpayer money to four former staffers who accused him of corruption. The whistleblowers accused Paxton of bribery and abuse of office back in October of 2020. They claimed Paxton misused his office to help a campaign donor, Austin real estate investor Nate Paul. The staffers were fired but sued to get their jobs back along with back pay and damages. In the preliminary settlement, Paxton agrees to apologize for referring to the former staffers as, quote, rogue employees. The settlement would also uh, pay the staffers $3.3 million, but the money will not come from Paxton. Instead, the state will pay the bill. Texas lawmakers will first have to approve that funding. The accusations from the whistleblowers led to an FBI investigation that is still ongoing. Now, this is not related to the other indictment Paxton faces, a felony security fraud case that dates back to 2015. Well, some more breaking news now. Austin High School is notifying parents that head baseball coach William Brown has been arrested after what it calls an incident with a student. The email to parents says Brown is charged with assault causing bodily injury. We are working to get you more information. The Congress Bridge in downtown Austin is back open. It was shut down for about 45 minutes just after one this afternoon after a report of a suspicious package. Police say they found the item and it was not a threat. The White House says President Biden ordered a U.S. military fighter jet to shoot down an unknown object flying off the coast of Alaska. A spokesperson for the National Security Council says it was flying at about 40,000 feet and posed a reasonable threat to the safety of civilian flights. He also described it as roughly the size of a small car, which is much smaller than the massive suspected Chinese spy balloon that was shot down on Saturday. First warning weather with Chief Meteorologist David Yeomans. Well, a bit of a bad hair day as promised. Gusty north winds over 30 miles per hour at times today. Right now on the maps, 20 to 28 miles per hour. Some of the strongest winds as usual in Burnett and Gillespie counties. Live outside, it is beautiful out there, but look at the windsock and the shake in the camera. On top of the hospital on 620 in Lakeway, it's 53 degrees. As the sun gets a little lower, look at this. It's 20, 25 degrees colder now than it was yesterday before the cold front blew through. Coming up in your forecast, where to plan for a freeze for the next two nights in the area, how the weekend afternoons look, and when our next chance of rain arrives. All right, David, thank you very much. The FBI discovered another document with classified markings today at former Vice President Mike Pence's Indiana home. As Alice Barr reports, Pence is also now the highest level person publicly known to be subpoenaed as part of the special counsel's probe into former President Donald Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Spotlight on former Vice President Mike Pence, now at the center of two major investigations on classified documents and January 6th. Jack Smith, the special counsel investigating former President Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election, issuing a subpoena to the former vice president. It signals that Jack Smith has entered an advanced stage. You do not subpoena the former vice president of the United States as your first witness. Prosecutors seeking evidence about critical meetings and phone calls surrounding January 6th and the former president's efforts to get Pence to reject the election results. They are looking for information that Pence singularly has. The former vice president has been outspoken in the past. 
I mean, the president's words were reckless. Mr. Pence declined to testify before the House January 6th committee, but a Justice Department subpoena in a criminal case holds a lot more legal weight. The former vice president is cooperating in a separate matter, agreeing to an FBI search of his Indiana home today that an advisor says yielded one more classified document. It comes after Mr. Pence reported last month his team had uncovered a small number of documents with with classified markings in the home saying at the time mistakes were made and I take full responsibility like in the case of President Biden's classified material the Pence FBI search did not require a warrant by contrast the FBI search of Mar-a-Lago came after former President Trump's team resisted repeated efforts to recover a trove of classified documents in Washington Alice Barr NBC News and Mr. Pence refused to testify before the House January 6th committee, but a DOG, a DOJ subpoena holds a lot more legal weight, and analysts say executive privilege will be a tough sell. All right, well, it is Super Bowl weekend. 100,000 fans are pouring into Phoenix for a lot of fun. The rest of us are going to be watching on TV. And as Jay Gray has the lineup of commercials set to hit your screen. Okay, guys, the big game means big commercial. So, Jake, you fly in on a hang glider. With the average cost for 30 seconds of Super Bowl airtime, $7 million. Advertisers spending nearly $600 million, a record, to fill the space between plays with 100 million viewers or more getting a look at their product or service. We take what we do seriously. Well, not so much. I used to be pretty clueless. Hey, corporate types, would you stop calling each other rock stars? Fancy hotel with a sexy guard. Landscape architect. For a lot of advertisers, funny is the game plan, and star power, the big player on Super Sunday. I've never seen anything like the situation this year where the vast majority of the ads are both using celebrities and using humor. Oh, don't judge me, Anton. Most with the spot also releasing online teasers and launching social media campaigns. Dexcom unveiling a new G7 glucose monitoring system featuring users they call warriors. So it's about creating awareness of, of the product and what we do and having everybody know there is a better solution uh, for diabetes health. And full disclosure, I'm awfully proud of this warrior, my son Trevor. Steve, what's going on? I might have taken a small bite. Advertisers doing anything they can to take a big bite out of the business surrounding the Super Bowl. Jay Gray, NBC News, Phoenix. And one more thing to look out for during the breaks in the game, uh, no more crypto ads. Crypto is out with beer taking its place. Budweiser is giving up its exclusive rights as far as beer advertising is concerned for the big game. All right, a local woman arrested after driving onto the Texas State Capitol grounds while she's now facing five felony charges. The search for a missing man focused on the Lady Bird Lake Trail, the Lake's family and friends are going to to find out what happened. And EMS to the rescue, even when it's not safe for them to be out. The program they say worked and even saved lives during last week's ice storm. A Cedar Park woman is facing felony charges after DPS says she drove onto the state capitol grounds last night. Officers say 25-year-old Carla Morales Mateo drove her SUV onto the sidewalk near 11th and Congress around 640 last night. They say she first dropped off two children and then intentionally drove through an iron fence onto the grounds up a driveway before stopping near the steps. No one was hurt. The suspect is charged with criminal mischief, aggravated assault on a peace officer, evading arrest, driving while intoxicated, and child abandonment. Well, now to the ongoing search for a missing 30-year-old man, Jason John. Family members tell us he was last seen around 2 a.m. Sunday near Rainy Street. They say he was out with friends celebrating a job promotion. John's loved ones have been working the case themselves near Rainey and along Lady Bird Lake Trail. They're handing out flyers, talking to trail users, and talking to people camped out nearby. They've even set up the phone number that you see right there at the bottom of your screen for anonymous tips. We have footage of him throughout Rainy Street, but then once he takes that turn is where he has to decide whether he takes the road or he goes down this trail. 
Now this entire area, there's multiple cameras with claims that none of them work. This Holiday Inn is here as well, the cameras don't work. We don't have access to see what happened and that is the most critical thing because nothing is definitive. There's stories uh, we've heard from some witnesses that someone was by the trees in this area, uh, dry heaving, uh, and then there's another story, someone fell into the water. So our focus has been maybe he's in the water. Um, you know, the police have been out there. Um, but I think they need more resources. I think more attention needs to be drawn to this and we need some more concrete, you know, information. We want answers. We want my brother found. We also need to we did, we did. And there will be a vigil for John Saturday at 6 o'clock at Chicano Park along the lake. 19 degrees colder in terms of our afternoon high than the 70s we had yesterday. Only made it to 56 today in Austin. Compare that to the record high, 90 on today's date back in 1954. Also a chilly day at the airport with temperatures locked at 56. A couple of overnight freezes. We'll talk about what your weekend afternoons look like coming up. This KXAN News Podcast is brought to you by Shelf Genie. I'm Rosie Newberry from KXAN Studio 512. Considering replacing your kitchen cabinets? Struggling to find or reach things? Go to ShelfGenie.com slash Austin. Shelf Genie designs custom pull-out shelves for your existing cabinets, adding convenience and value to the most used room in your home. Shelf Genie custom pull-out shelves, everything in reach. Cold weather shelters will be open once again tonight as we brace for temperatures in the low 30s again. Austin Travis County EMS is also gearing up for more winter weather emergencies. KXN's Brianna Hollis looks at a program that made a huge difference during last week's storm. What's really interesting about this storm is when the ice went away, the crisis wasn't over. The extended power outages caused dangerous, potentially deadly problems for Austinites. Hi. I'm writing to express my gratitude for an EMS employee who really made the difference for my family during this ice storm. That's in an email ATC EMS got from a person whose sister's power went out and she needed that power for her oxygen tank. The normal help couldn't get to her, so EMS's integrated solutions team stepped in and helped. People were so grateful. They really uh, made some statements like they didn't know what else they were going to do. This team launched in 2020, but it keeps changing to serve the needs of the community. This is the first time it rolled out for a weather event like this. The team is made up of dispatchers, PAs, and community health paramedics who cater specifically to callers who need help but don't need to go to the ER in an ambulance. This team wasn't out providing this service, then that would probably fall back onto an ambulance crew. And then that ambulance would not be available to, to run 911 calls. EMS says having this program in place allowed them to bring oxygen tanks to 90 people during the extended power outage. And if you were stuck in the dark and needed non-dire medical help, you could, through EMS, get a doctor's visit virtually via telehealth. Brianna Hollis, KXAN News. First warning weather with Chief Meteorologist David Yeomans. Well, cool, windy evening out there as you hopefully kick off your Friday night and weekend plans. As you get ready for the big game, this chilly weather continues. It's 53 degrees right now on the Austonian weather cam. The last of the cloud cover that we dealt with yesterday and early this morning, it is exiting out to the east. 53 in Austin, but 40s in much of the hill country. Temperatures already stepping down even before the sun sets. It's 48 degrees in Llano, a little milder down south, 55 in San Marcos and along I-10. The pollen count has taken a bit of a jump in your hour-by-hour -hour data this afternoon. Winds have kicked up some cedar into the medium concentration. Mold is actually a little lower as we dry out from recent rain, but also in moderate concentrations. Here goes the spinning low pressure system, which is still over the state tonight. This low pressure, which is actually trying to create some snow in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, just mixing in with the light rain showers. It's about to pump the brakes. It's kind of getting cut off from the jet stream, which should be pushing the this thing out of here. Instead, it sort of sits where it is for the next 12 or 18 hours, and that means on the backside of it, these cool temperatures to our north in the 40s from Waco and Abilene into Dallas, they'll keep blowing our way on that gusty north wind. Now, the wind chill will become more of a factor over the next few hours. Technically, when the temperature is 50 or above, there is no wind chill, but that won't hold for long as temperatures fall this evening and the winds stay a little breezy. Wind chill temperatures, at least, are near freezing in Fredericksburg and in the mid to upper 30s by 10 p.m. Tomorrow morning at sunrise, you got to bundle up if you're going to walk the uh, Lady Bird Lake hike and bike trail. 28 is the wind chill tomorrow morning in town, even colder mid-20s in our northern 
tier of counties. Actual air temperatures, they will be freezing cold in many areas tomorrow morning, but the breezy winds kind of mix up the atmosphere and keep Austin's temperature a little bit warmer than it would otherwise be. I think we won't freeze tomorrow morning, probably not the next morning either in central Austin, but just about everybody else should plan for a freeze. Here we are tomorrow afternoon with a breezy north wind keeping us cool again in the 50s. As I mentioned, we could have a couple of freezes this weekend, but this computer model and a couple others want to bring in some cloud cover by early Sunday morning. If that happens, which is still an if, it could keep temperatures warmer like you see here. Let's be safe, though, and continue to protect your sensitive plants and all of the other freeze preparations. Whatever happens in the morning, Sunday afternoon, we really start to warm up. Plenty of sunshine still and a south wind returning that boosts us well into the 60s. So the weekend looks dry and pleasant overall, but it looks a little cool and breezy tomorrow. Highs of only 58, but they jump almost 10 degrees with a few scattered clouds on a very pleasant Sunday afternoon. Now, if you've been with us for the last few days, you know we're watching a Valentine's Day storm clipping us next week. Unfortunately for our drought situation, which continues, especially southwest of Austin, our rain total forecasts keep stepping down. Hopefully we can reverse this trend over the weekend, but right now we may only see a quarter to a half inch next week and over the next seven days combined. All right, tonight's forecast, mostly clear, still a little breezy, 34 degrees in central Austin, freezing cold elsewhere. Tomorrow, cool sunshine and a little breezy, but not as windy as today. Highs of only 58. As I mentioned, if those clouds tomorrow night don't return, we could be even a little colder, close to freezing tomorrow night, even in downtown Austin. After Sunday afternoon's pleasant weather, the warm-up continues through Valentine's Day and beyond. How about 80 degrees on Wednesday before a chilly cold front knocks temperatures back starting on Thursday? As for the chance of rain from that next storm, it's down Tuesday morning, now to 50%. Well, just ahead, new developments in that family cliff crash in California that prosecutors say was on purpose. A man suspected of trying to kill his family by driving off a cliff is pleading not guilty. Investigators say Darmesh Patel drove his Tesla off a 250-foot cliff on a California Bay Area highway just after New Year. The Pasadena doctor, his wife, and two young children survived the crash but were seriously injured. Patel is charged with three counts of attempted murder, causing bodily harm, and domestic violence based on eyewitness accounts and statements his wife made to the paramedics. Investigators say they have traffic video showing the car turning off the road toward the cliff. Well, checking in on COVID-19 now, the weekly update for Texas shows we are averaging more than 1,300 new cases per day. We're also averaging 24 COVID deaths per day. Last month, Governor Greg Abbott said his public health disaster declaration will remain in place until the legislature bans COVID-19 related restrictions. But on the national front, U.S. Health and Human Services Secretary Javier Becerra announced yesterday he will let the COVID public health emergency expire on May 11th. And here's what that means for you. People with private health insurance may have to pay for COVID tests both over the counter and lab depending on their plans. Seniors with Medicare Part B will start paying for over-the-counter tests, though the program will cover lab tests. COVID vaccines and antivirals like Paxlovid will remain free to everyone regardless of insurance status until the current federal stockpile runs out. And ending the public health emergency also means hospitals will lose flexibility to expand capacity in response to surges. And the federal government can no longer require labs to report COVID test results to the CDC. Thanks for listening to KXAN News Nightly. You can also listen to KXAN News Today every morning for more in-depth coverage of what matters most to you.